This episode is all about importing CSS files into IRIs and using those CSS styles within our IRIs project. To get started, go into your Assets files and into the Episode 9, Importing CSS into IRIs, and the IDOCS folder, and start at Episode 09, Start.IDOC. And we also want to go to the CSS folder and open up Episode 9.CSS within whatever browser you use for CSS. I happen to use Top Style Lite. Now you can see within our CSS example file, we have four specific styles that we're going to import into our IRIs project. So to import these styles into IRIs, we want to go back to IRIs and go to the Edit Styles Manager, click on the Import CSS button, and choose our Episode 9.CSS file. Once we click OK, we're given the Import Confirmation window. This file tells us that we have four styles that we're going to import and that one style already has a matching name that's already in our project. So before we import everything, let's go to the Replacement Options window. Using the Replacement Options window gives us the ability to pick and choose what we want to do with these styles, either by category, such as matching names or unique names, or we can do it by each individual CSS class. For example, I know I have a test CSS class that I do not want to replace, so I'm just going to choose Delete. And then for all the ones that are unique names, I'm just going to keep it the same as a new style. A lot of times when you go back and you're re-editing your CSS and you're re-importing it into your files, many times you want to replace what's already there by what you've edited in your CSS file. So now I'm going to click Import and click Done, and if we go up to our Styles, you'll see the four that we entered are now in our Styles area, one middle section, one new text box, and one new section. First thing here I'm going to do is I'm going to reopen my CSS file and note that middle section is width 243, text to line left, and it's got a border of thin, dotted, and red. Back in iRise, I want to apply that to my middle section table that I have here. And keep in mind to pay attention to what you're selecting within iRise so that you don't apply your style to the wrong item. Uh, this specifically has to do with a table that I want to table select the whole table because if I just select the cell of the table, I'll get different results when I execute the file rather than I will selecting the whole table. So we want to apply middle section there, and if I click off of that, you'll see that my uh, border is now visible. However, the width of the style did not apply, and we'll talk about this a little bit later on in the tutorial. Next, I'm going to use the Zoom tool to zoom in to the Newsletter Sign-Up section. And again, within my CSS file, I have a News Section class with Arial Font, 10 Point, and Black Italic. So if I choose the Newsletter section below, and I click on News Section, that applies that style to that section. It's important to note that in iRise, Inheritance of Classes applies as a top-down model to objects. Any class that I apply to a section will be applied to applicable widgets within that section. That way we don't have to apply the class multiple times to each widget. However, if I did want to change this text, I can do so by selecting the widget and choosing another class, which will remove the inheritance. Now, I want to go back to my CSS file and look at News Text Box and note that it's Arial 12 point, it has a text color of white, and has the gold background color and the gold uh, border color. So back in iRise, I choose the text box and I go to News Text Box and notice that it didn't really do anything. Um, if I execute the file into a web browser, it does, however, show the background color and the border, but my text is black text instead of white text. And here's the reason for that. Since this text box is actually a form element, we need to think back to the previous episode when we were editing styles. So if I edit the news text box item, remember that there is a form tab for form fields. So if I go back to my main area and I copy these colors from the main style within the form style, And I change the font to be Arial 12 white. Click 
click done, execute it back in the web browser again. You'll now see that my object within my form changes to that style that I created in iRise but doesn't apply the CSS and that's because we went into the form tab which there really isn't a way to apply styles to the form tab in CSS files. Now I will note that importing CSS styles is an area that iRise could definitely improve. It's very helpful in pulling in simple styles that may already be existing from a website or application but lacks an export function to export CSS files that you may have created within iRise, which would be a definite plus. If we look back within the Styles Manager and we edit any of these styles, you'll notice that there's a section called Other Attributes, and when we're importing CSS, there may be a style or two that shows up there notifying the user that the style will only be available when the project is ran. It's important to remember that iRise style behaviors and CSS files have their pros and cons, and that they don't behave the same. For more information on the rules of styles and attributes, view help by going to F1, go to creating simulations, styles and formatting, and importing styles. And for more information on inheritance and cascading between CSS and iRISE, go to the inheritance section. Thanks for flying in to mockflock.com.